Happy holidays, everyone. I'm Joshua Orwell, the Mustang Prince. And welcome to my final Christmas blog of 2017 on Mustang Prince Oral Reports. Now, let's start by talking about one of the most underrated and strongest animated princess franchises in the whole world. The Swan Princess. While I still regret not seeing it in theaters back in the 90s, I still think The Swan Princess is a great movie, with a beautiful story, great characters, a threatening villain, and fun and memorable songs. And while I haven't blogged this movie, or the two movies that came after it, I'm still glad that I managed to talk about the recent three computer-generated movies on my blog show. And while these movies became a plague on Swan Princess fans with all the hate, I found them to be great movies that made me laugh, scream, cry, and I even had a lot of fun with them. Plus, I really think Odette's daughter, Elise, was a cute addition to the franchise. Also, not too long after I blogged Royally Undercover, I discovered that an eighth movie would be released to DVD next year. But, since it's Christmas, I'm going to look into the movie where Odette and the gang made their return after a 14-year-long hiatus. And hopefully, there are no thumbs down or negative comments on this blog. Anyway, let's get started. Released to DVD on November 6, 2012, the movie is... The Swan Princess Christmas. Now, let's get started. Princess Odette, her husband Prince Derek, and their friends Speed, Puffin, and Jean Bob go to Queen Yuberta's castle for their first Christmas celebration. But as the kingdom prepares for the festive holiday, trouble stirs when the villainous Rothbart returns from the dead. With help from his from a mischievous cat named Number 9, Rothbard plots to destroy Christmas in order to return to his powerful self. With Rothbard trying to make the people of the kingdom lose their Christmas spirit, will Odette and her friends be able to stop the evil wizard and save Christmas? Well, sorry, you'll have to find out for yourselves. Yes, you heard me. I am recommending you to watch this movie. Why? Because I really liked it. And I don't care what anyone says. It was a great Christmas movie and a wonderful return to familiar faces. But in order to explain why I love this movie, let's move on to Mustang Notes. For the first time since the third movie, Richard Rich, the director of The Fox and the Hound and The Black Cauldron, returned to direct the movie which I find is a very smart move. The movie was produced by Crest Animation Productions, the same studio that gave us Alpha and Omega, and was distributed by Stage 6 Films, which was, believe it or not, originally an actual soundstage used for such films like The Wizard of Oz. Hmm, I never knew that. It's also the first Swan Princess movie to be animated in CGI. Speaking of which, what are my thoughts on the CGI animation? Well, I don't hate it. It just looks a bit dated compared to the movies that came afterwards. But, on the positive side, the backgrounds look very nice and the character designs are very reminiscent to their hand-drawn counterparts. Plus, Uberta's kingdom looks very beautiful around Christmas time, especially with all the swan wind chimes all over the castle. What's interesting about this movie is that it takes place between the first movie and the second film, The Secret of the Castle, because this is Odette's first Christmas with Derek, where in The Secret of the Castle, Odette and Derek have been married for about a year, so, in a way, 
one Christmas must have gone by between the two films. Also, you may be asking how I managed to come across this movie. Well, while I was watching Arthur Christmas, I found a trailer for this movie, and boy, was I deeply surprised that the Swan Princess decided to come back after so many years. Now, there are a few scenes I should talk about. Firstly, in one scene, while Uberta and Rogers are fighting with each other, thanks to Rothbard's magic, they fight with glowing light sticks, Star Wars styled. And yes, I said light sticks, not lightsabers. There's a difference. Secondly, after Rothbart regains his human form, he repeats what he did in the first movie by turning Odette back into a swan. Only this time, it's much more severe because he traps Odette in a cage made of roots and casts a spell on the moon which will turn Odette into a golden swan-shaped Christmas ornament forever once it touches her wings. Also, the scene where everyone yells out that it's ornament day might make people think of the scene in Frozen where Anna yells that it's coronation day. Well, that may be similar, but keep in mind, Frozen came out after the Swan Princess Christmas. The movie's music was composed by Vassal Benford. And since this is the first animated movie he ever composed for, in my opinion, the score is very beautiful. Also, what would be a Christmas movie, let alone a Swan Princess movie, without wonderful Christmas songs? Firstly, there are a couple instrumental versions of classic Christmas songs. For example, the opening overture plays Somewhere in My Memories, which makes me feel all warm inside whenever I listen to it. And Chamberlain plays We Wish You a Merry Christmas with his trumpet while Odette and Derek approach the castle and O Christmas Tree during Ornament Day. During the Christmas rehearsals, Uberta and Roger's groups sing short versions of Deck the Halls, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Angels We Have Heard on High, and Jolly Old St. Nicholas. Uberta's footmen get to sing God Rest You Merry Gentlemen while they're in the village, and Odette, Derek, Speed, and Puffin sing Jingle Bells while they ride to Uberta's castle. Plus, Rothbard gets to sing his own twisted version of the 12 Days of Christmas when he first emerges as a ghost. During the Christmas Eve show, the chorus sings songs like Joy to the World, Here We Come a Carolyn, and Away in a Manger. And finally, there are two original songs for the movie, like Christmas is the Reason, which Odette chooses for the Christmas Eve party, and invites the children to sing. And in my opinion, this is a really wonderful Christmas song. And the last song I want to talk about is Season of Love, not to be confused with the song from Rent. Besides, that version is plural. Anyway, in my opinion, it is such a beautiful song full of meaning of what Christmas is really about, being together with the people you love. What's more, this song is sung three times throughout the movie. The first time is during Ornament Day, when Odette is going around the village observing what the people do for Christmas and when they set up the Christmas tree. The second time is sung by Odette in order to save Derek and defeat Rothbart. And the third time is sung during the end credits by Anna Graceman, best known from America's Got Talent. And in my opinion, Anna Graceman is such a wonderful singer. Anyway, now that we're done with Mustang Notes, Animation, and Songs, 
Let's move on to the characters and their voice actors. Our main heroine and swan princess, Princess Odette, is sadly no longer voiced by Michelle Nicastro due to her tragic death from breast and brain cancer during November 2010. Instead, Odette's voice is provided by Laura Bailey, who got to be in Soul Eater, the alternate Spider-Man TV series, and ugh, Space Chimps 2. Anyway, I think Laura does a great job voicing Odette, and I really like the things that Odette does throughout the movie, like helping Uberta and Rogers with the Christmas party, inviting the children to sing Christmas is the Reason, and when she invites Rogers and Uberta to help her deliver food and presents to the people of the Woodcutter's Village. Also, Remember when I said that Odette's late father, King William, got some character development during Royally Undercover? Well, in this movie, Odette does tell Rogers and Uberta that every Christmas time, ever since she can remember, she and her father would go to the village to deliver the food and gifts without being seen. To me, that was a very sweet tradition. And it's sad that this was Odette's first Christmas without him. No thanks to Rothbard killing him in the first movie. Odette's husband, Prince Derek, is voiced by Yuri Lowenthal, who got to voice a teenage Ben Tennyson from the Ben 10 series, and the Nickelodeon voice of Ogron from the Winx Club. And just recently, he got to voice in the Son of Bigfoot movie. Which, I pray, gets an American release someday. Anyway, to me, Derek is a great prince. Not only is he supportive to his wife, but he's very brave and clever. While Derek may be the reason why Rothbard has returned, thanks to number nine leading him to the cellar, I really like the scene where Derek uses a snowboard and takes down two ice leopards while looking for a Christmas tree, and when he plans a trap for Rothbart. Derek's mother, Queen Uberta, is voiced by Jennifer Miller. In this film, She's said to be the most focused when it comes to Christmas. However, in my opinion, Uberta can be pretty silly at times. But when she's fighting with Rogers, courtesy of Rothbard's magic, it makes her sound like a spoiled child. Next up is Lord Rogers, voiced by Joseph Medrano. who got to voice Scully in Royal Family Tale and Princess Tomorrow Pirate Today, and got to be in Decisions. To me, Rogers is a wonderful character in this movie. Some folks may find it weird that Rogers invented wind chimes, snowboards, and light bulbs in this, even though, according to history, that's inaccurate. But... This is a family film, so what are you going to do? However, in my opinion, Roger's monologue in the beginning of the movie is my favorite scene that he's involved with. Because during said monologue, he explains about Christmas traditions and that each ornament on the royal Christmas tree represents a very special memory. Next we have Odette's animal friends, Speed, Puffin, and Jean Bob, voiced by Clayton James McKay, Gardner Jass, and Doug Stone. While mostly they serve as comic reliefs throughout the movie, they are still very memorable characters. 
I really like that they participate in the Christmas rehearsals and recommend Odette to use Christmas as the reason for the Christmas party. Plus, I think the scene where they chase number nine is very funny. Especially when Jean Bob gets kicked around when he's trying to get a kiss while he's ice skating, and when he's used as a toolbox. Plus, the way Speed moves while he's in his shell makes me think of Goofy's turtle form from Kingdom Hearts 2. Next, we have Derek's best friend, Bromley, who's voiced by Joey Lotzko, who got to voice Mangler in Royal Family Tale, King Sebastian in Royally Undercover, and of course, he's the current voice of Jiminy Cricket. Anyway, in this movie, Bromley is a good character when he helps Derek find a Christmas tree while skiing through Ice Leopard Pass, and when he helps Derek make a cage made of huge wind chimes to trap Rothbart. Plus, Brom is pretty funny when he cries in fear after Derek tells him about Rothbart. Next, we come to our main villain, Rothbart, voiced by Sean Wright. And, keep in mind that this is his first time voicing Rothbart since the third movie. Anyway, in this film, Rothbart returns again as a ghost. And he's not the only villain to return as one. Remember Shrek's 3D sequel? Anyway, this time... Rothbart has an evil plan to return from the dead, enlisting number nine to help him by promising extra nine lives in return. After Rothbart is released from a mysterious box in Uberta's cellar, he plans to destroy Christmas by using the forbidden arts to put people in a bad mood and to fight with each other, starting with Uberta and Rogers. However, Rothbart does have one weakness that being the swan wind chimes, since they represent Christmas and Odette. Later on in the movie, after his spell is broken, thanks to Odette, with Uberta and Roger's help delivering food and gifts to the poor, Rothbard becomes powerless. But, like in the first movie, he has a backup plan. He plans to sabotage the royal Christmas tree. So, he sends number 9 to steal one of the Christmas light bulbs from the tree, and he casts a spell on it that will destroy the tree when the lights turn on. Also, what he does to Odette isn't the only nostalgic thing he does in this movie. He gets to fight Derek in his great animal form again. And in my opinion, it's equally as frightening as it was in the first movie. And holy mackerel, does Derek take a beating from it. Next we have number 9, voiced by David Lodge. Who, after this movie, voiced the Forbidden Arts in Royal Family Tale, and Marquis Niccolo in Royally Undercover. He also got to be in Happily Never After 2, and Digimon the movie. In this film, even though he becomes a reformed palace cat after this movie, Nine does Rothbard's bidding in exchange for new lives. In my opinion, Nine is a klutz of a cat when he gets himself into trouble or when he almost gets himself killed. But sometimes he does make me laugh a bit. Anyway, what he does is lure Derek to a mysterious box that he should open so the ghost of Rothbard can come out and use his power to destroy Christmas. Plus, Nine also steals one of the Christmas light bulbs and keeps an eye on it while the Christmas party goes on. 
Next we have Rothbard's former henchwoman, Bridget, voiced by Catherine Levine. In this movie, while sometimes she can be funny with the way her speech is, and when she flirts with Chamberlain, she pretends to be on Rothbard's side by giving him information about what Odette has been doing and cutting down some of the wind chimes. I also think it was pretty clever for Bridget to help Derek and Bromley by luring Rothbard into their trap. The last character I want to talk about is Sir Peter, also voiced by Doug Stone. Peter is a friendly and kind old man, and everyone in the kingdom seems to like him. While Peter doesn't appear too much in the movie, he does make a decent character. Plus, I like the scene where Peter tells Odette and Derek about how most of the villagers refuse to let him help them due to them being affected by Rothbard's magic. I also find it sad that Peter lost his wife a while ago. Speaking of which, the angel that she made for Peter is very beautiful. And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, despite its transition from paper to pixels, The Swan Princess Christmas is still a wonderful movie to watch during the Christmas season. And I love how this movie is fueled by Christmas spirit. Plus, the characters are as great and memorable as they were in the first three films. Rothbard is still a threatening villain, and number nine is a funny sidekick, even though he does become reformed in Royally Undercover. What's more, the music and songs are the best parts of the movie, and the ending climax is very nostalgic. Plus, I'm deeply looking forward to the upcoming 8th movie, and I don't give a drat what anyone says. I know it'll be great, just like the last three were. So, with that said, I stand by what I said back in 2014 and give this movie a rating of 80% out of 100. And I still make it a tradition to watch this movie every Christmas along with the other Christmas classics. Well, that's it for Season 5 of Mustang Prince Oral Reports. Be sure to join me in 2018 for Season 6. So until then, this is Joshua Oral of the Mustang Prince saying, Mustang Power. And have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a Happy New Year.